My name is Dirk Lehmann. I'm part of the product management for SAP's internal CI CD platform. I'm working with the company since over 21 years in various roles, such as development and operations. And I was part of the first team that managed to get into daily deliveries at SAP. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about our journey towards an internal CI CD platform offering serving roughly 30,000 developers. So where do we come from? SAP's technology stack comprises of various technologies from propri proprietary tech stacks, which were established decades back, to latest and greatest cloud native technologies. For the various tech stacks, centrally managed tools are offered to the development teams so they can simply consume commodity offerings such as large GitHub instances we serve or as Jenkins CI server farms and so on, which sounds quite ideal, but it gets a little bit more tricky the closer you look into those offerings. Sometimes you offer tools that basically do the same thing, like multiple pipeline orchestrators or build tools. And sometimes we offer multiple instances of the very same tools, such as GitHub, where we have slight different differences in the configurations or the network segments. So for the development team's experience, it's not ideal. It's not a pick and choose because they have to do decisions depending on their technology stack, programming language, location, and so on. And not all central two teams were served in the past by one on the same central team, but security, team, uh, security tools were served by the central security organization or legal compliance tools by the central legal team and so on. And not only tools um, were offered centrally to SAP's development teams. As SAP is operating globally and having customers in 25 industry segments from oil and gas to public sector, health, insurance, banking, you name it, we have it, which is all quite neat for the, from a business point of view, comes challenging to the development as distinct industries have distinct requirements, standards, uh, and even certifications that we as a supplier need to fulfill. So SAP has put a bunch of process requirements into place, which are kind of best practices. How you as a team create enterprise create, so create software for various industries in various countries. Some of them are really treated like best practices, so you could follow them. And some of them are a bit more mandatory. And some of them are really not negotiable, like legal requirements, expert and trade compliance, and stuff that the teams basically always have to follow. And last but not least, we have plenty of guidelines for the development teams. Guidelines on architecture, operational, handbooks, service management, all that stuff. Some of them are mandatory in some organizations, but not in the others. Some of them are globally, so whole SAP mandatory. Some only to some certain products. And again, it's the, the engineering team to find out which ones they have to follow, which one work for them, and so on. So you see the complexity for the engineering teams is quite high. Picking the right tool or the right tool chain, right? A sum of tools that all play nicely together. Um, they have to ensure that they follow the, the changing requirements, the process, changing process requirements, making sure that they don't miss an update. Worst case, they are their next delivery could be stopped. Or um, they have to follow the latest guidelines that just have been published and they should follow that. And Back some, some years back, that might not have been such a big issue to the development teams. When you do on-premise software and you ship every several years to your customers, you have plenty of time. And at that point in time, there was more central, more central organizations that got your back covered as a development team. But lately, we seek for a higher delivery frequency to get into faster feedback loops with our customers. And in order to do so, we empowered our engineering teams so they could take over more responsibility Shifting left is the key word here. And the more and more, and, and shifting left simply puts more and more load on the engineering teams. And this is kind of getting into a problem because the team's cognitive load explodes. And if the team's cognitive load gets too high due to too many unrelated tasks, their ability to deliver customer value goes down. So is shifting left a problem? Did we as a whole industry have gone wrong the last years? I don't think so. And James Governor, co-founder of Redmond, put it to the point in one of his uh, blog posts where he said, you need to have a good developer experience in place that allows you to shift things left. If the developer experience breaks and you shift things left, 
cognitive load blows up and development, productivity, developer happiness, customer value, and the good things go down while the bad things like failure rate, stress, burnout ratios, and so on, they go up. So it's important to have first a good developer experience and then shift things left. A broken process doesn't get fixed because you shift it left. It remains broken and just increases the team's cognitive load. Improving the developer experience, this is where platform engineering kicks in. And two years back, we started a program to reduce the team's cognitive load by implementing an internal CI CD platform offering following the platform as a product approach, which is nicely described in the team's topology books by uh, Manu Manuel Paish and Matthew Skelton. And I think Manuel uh, even has a talk here on PlatformCon about platform as a product, so make sure you don't miss that one out. We named our internal platform Hyperspace because we had a predecessor project called Hyperpipe, and so we somehow stick to the hyper name. The basic idea here is uh, the following. We have one central entry point for all the development teams where they access all the resources. Think of it like the, 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 the backstage project from Spotify or now uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Underneath of that, we have the same tools and services, but now we organize them all into one organization with one product management aside, which takes care of all that all the tools getting integrated, harmonized, and aligned. And we, reno we renovated our process requirements framework so that it fits closer to our tools and services so that a higher degree of tests, scans, and compliance checks will be automated. And the trick here also is the same ownership that applies to the whole platform now also owns, us the, owns the process framework. It's the same team. And we have one new component, which is right here in the middle, that we call the paved roads. Other companies call this approach the golden pass, but I think the idea is the same, giving teams clear end-to-end -end guidance for their complete delivery process fitting to their technology stack and demand. So we want to give a concrete answer when the teams ask us, how shall I use this tool in order to fulfill that process? We want to tell them, look, this is our envisioned best practice pre-compiled into your context, your technology stack, please follow that. And for these predefined paved roads, we took a divide and conquer approach. Our paved roads are composed out of various parts, which we call the development procedures. Now, in plain words, a development procedures describes a thing that an engineering team needs to do in order to ship software at SAP. Let's give me an example. If a team wants to use open source library in their application, they have to um, touch various tools and requirements like licensing, making sure it's not infectious license, global trade and export compliancing, they have to maintain a current software bill of material, security, is there a known vulnerability? How do you ensure that if, there's an, is there, if there is a new vulnerability, you can fix that and you are informed and you can mitigate and so on. So they touch various processes out of various areas and various tools. And now with the development procedures, we describe exactly this, how to get things done, but we formulate it with a trigger and a value. The trigger is some action for the engineering teams like, hey, I want to use an open source library. And the value is something that they get when they follow that certain development procedure. Here in that case, well, you can ship code faster with your open source library, but now in a secure and compliant way. And with that, you can describe all kinds of things like how do I manage my backlog to make work transparent and helps me easy um, releasing features easier and so on. Always, uh, and, and, and the, 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 the change of what we provide here is, is quite significant. Instead of providing just tools, we now describe very precisely how to use the tools, how to configure them, in which sequence you should use them in a certain context to fulfill certain requirements and guidelines that apply to the teams in their very context. Now, if you do have many of those development procedures and you combine them, you get a paved road. Important here is that the development procedures in one paved road are internally consistent, meaning that they are not contradicting or conflicting each other. So if development procedure number one tells you use that tool in this particular way, we ensure that it does not contradict whatever development procedure number five tells you how you should use that tool and how you should configure it. And also each development procedure has a clear ownership. The development procedure owner, who is a subject matter expert in the whole end-to-end -end development procedure topic. And the paved road owner, and the paved road has an owner, someone who watches the internal consistency of the paved road. 
And I believe you have identified already what I showed you in the last two slides, value streams, the old idea of value streams. We have one large value stream that we call the paved road and smaller value streams, the development procedures. And that's a trick. We did not invent anything new, but it's the same old idea that's decades old and we just slightly adopted it. So for example, we, we now has an ownership model that provides clear accountability and responsibility, who's accountable to improve the end-to-end -end development procedures. But deep in their heart, still a development procedure or a paved road is a value stream. And this comes um, with benefits for all parties. Like the engineering teams now have for the first time an end-to-end -end description how to deliver software at SAP in their specific context provided by a central team covering tools and processes. And what you see here is how the most development teams um, see the development procedures as documentation. They don't see so much what we automate and optimize in the background, but first of all, it appears to them as documentation describing what, how, and why they should do certain things. And we, as a central platform provider, now have a systemic description of the whole delivery process that most teams follow, and we can optimize along that. Now we can see the bottleneck and the constraints and improve the system as a whole, spelled with a W. And the feedback we have received is, is quite, uh, quite good. I mean, we started this uh, the f uh, releasing the first paved road end of September last year. So the experiences are quite fresh, but we already had teams that uh, said that saved us weeks of work, which is quite significant. In the future, we want to have more development procedures describing more things like operations, the portfolio process, cultural transformations, while at the same time keeping the overall number of development procedures minimal. And we want to have more paved roads fitting to the, our various technology stacks and programming languages by reusing the existing, uh, existing development procedures to build up new paved roads like a Lego system. So far, um, here are some learnings that I've noted down and they might be helpful. So things that we learned and that might come handy into you. Limit your scope, right? It is good complex enough to understand, especially in big companies, um, how such processes um, um, are working. So you should rather focus on, on the small parts and try this divide and conquer approach. Make the first scope as narrow as feasible. It's okay if the scope looks pretty much greenfield with too few adoption cases in the real world. Your first goal is not adoption. Your first goal is transparency, gaining insights on the complex structures that are currently in place. So start with the S is situation. Improvements can be done later. Your, your goal is to describe the S is situation and get transparency and insights into what's currently happening. And have clear ownership on the end-to-end -end processes, the value streams, the development procedures, the paved roads, um, someone who, who takes um, accountability and responsibility for those processes. Now the paved roads are one, but very central, but only one component of our hyperspace CI CD platform. So let me use the remaining minutes to share you some learnings that we had um, in the overall platform. Um, currently we have roughly 30 to 14,000 pipelines that run on hyperspace, but we never did mandate the platform. Mandating platforms is a bad idea, I think. It kills innovation and it suppresses honest feedback. Um, putting all the tools into one central ownership helped us a lot because it avoids unnecessary friction and handover. We are big fans of paved roads and golden paths because they help you to get a systemic view on the whole process and take your time. This is not a thing that you can do in a few months. We have started this two years back and it still feels like we are just getting started. We are still learning and discovering new things that we need to get a handle on. And tell your platform vision as a story. Repeat the story again and, to, and again to your platform engineers, especially at the beginning when it's hard to see where this whole thing will, will end up and how you will ever compose a platform out of that. You need to have a compelling storyboard showcasing the life of a certain role, how it will look like once you have your platform in place so that everyone can create his or her own mental model um, knowing what they are working on. So I hope I could give you some insights into, into our work and what we are doing, and maybe the one or the other idea could inspire you. If you want, feel free to reach out via the listed social media networks. And with that, thank you and bye-bye.